Hello ladies and gentlemen again, this is Carl Swartz reporting the results from Project Tornado Genesis informing multiple vortices. Uh, it has been discovered that multiple vortex tornado formation successfully occurs at a 30 degree inflow angle in which this inflow is set to a distance from the center where these multiple vortices form at 1 meter. I have also done my experiments at one and a half meters from the center at varied inflow angles and it has been found that multiple vortices do occur at a lesser degree angle such as at 30 degrees where multiple vortices did form at that distance but for a shorter time. We get a more of a significant result of multiple vortices lasting for a greater time than at one and a half meters at a distance set at one meter from the center at 30 degrees. All the inflow fans are set at one meter at an inflow angle at 30 degrees. You are about to witness multiple vortices forming. Remember a very important mathematical value called swirl ratio known as S equals VC over WC is what illustrates this process where the inflow rate exceeds the value of the updraft speed in which the updraft is set at a control speed of 12 kilometers per hour. The fans are running at high speed of 22 kilometers per hour with the inflow uh, with the updraft fan as I said at uh, 12 kilometers per hour and with that greater value from the inflow fans it causes a process known as vortex breakdown or downflow of air shoots downward in the core of the tornado. It enlarges the wall of the center core, eventually forming these multiple vortices. This is an example of a real life violent multiple vortex tornado in Grand Island, Nebraska on March 13, 1990. This tornado destroyed a building three mobile homes, several farms, and a total of 62 railroad cars were overturned. 15 railroad cars at the Army Ordnance Plant, and it moved further northwest of Grand Island to overturn 47 more. A clip from Tornado Video Classics made by Thomas Grizzulas, director of the Tornado Project, informs us on the formation of multiple vortices with the operation of Dr. Neil Ward's model. Confirmation of this multiple vortex idea came from Neil Ward, working with a physical tornado model at the National Severe Storms Laboratory. In a process known as vortex breakdown, air, which usually moves upward inside a funnel, is pulled downward. Vortex breakdown can lead to multiple vortex development. After vortex breakdown, the outer wall of the tornado becomes thinner. In that thin outer wall, a certain critical value may be reached. When the ratio between the rising or vertical wind speed and the speed of rotation reaches a critical value, multiple vortices are a natural product. The Neil Ward model was perfected at Purdue University in the 1970s. It can produce multiple vortex tornadoes in several forms. With two, three, four, five, and even six multiple suction vortices, allowing for very detailed airflow studies. Here, smoke is entering from the top of the model revealing the downward movement of air in the center of the multiple vortex.